Imagine you are playing cricket with your friends. Now let's analyze the situation using geometry. Let's say that your pitch is along the x axis and the ball is coming from this direction. This is you, your bat and the wicket. And there are other players. So if the wicket is behind you and the baller is in front, you have people on your left and right as well. So let's have one more axis. This is your y axis. And we have a lot of other players on the field. Let's mark them. We have this, 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 this and the wicket keeper. All right. Now let's mark the coordinates. Let's say your wicket is at the origin. That's 0 comma 0. This person is 15 units away. So that's 15 comma 0. Wicket keeper is one unit behind. That's minus 1 comma 0. And similarly, you can mark coordinates for every single one of them. We have these, these, these and this coordinate. All right. Now the question for you is, and there is no right or wrong answer, you can give this one a guess. What are the coordinates of the top of the wicket? Not the wicket or the bottom of the wicket. What are the coordinates for the top of the wicket? Pause the video, think about it. We'll come back to this towards the end of the video. Now something that you might be thinking about is dimensions. Do we live in a 2D world where we only need two coordinates for each point? Or we live in a 3D world where we need three coordinates. To the best of my knowledge, we do live in the 3D world. We might use 2D maps, but we live in the 3D world. And what do we really mean by these words 2D, 3D dimensions? Let's break that down. Let's start from the very beginning. Let's start with something that's zero dimensional. Now zero dimensional means that you have no dimensions. Then there are things that are one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional and beyond, but we'll stop at three for now. So can you think of an example that's zero dimensional? A point is zero dimensional. What about 1D? Well, a line is one dimensional. 2D, a piece of paper can be two dimensional. And there are many examples for 3D. You can have a cube, your sweater, a rabbit or a tree. All of these things, all of these real things that we see in the real world are three dimensional. But these are examples. We want to understand what we really mean by the word dimension. Well, loosely speaking in math, dimensions give you the degrees of freedom. This gives you the number of perpendicular directions in which you can freely move. So when we talk about 1D objects, for example, this line, we can only move along one direction. We can either move forward or backward, but this is the only direction that we have. When you're in 2D, you have two directions, this and this x axis and y axis. But when you're in 3D, you have three directions. And for that, we need three axes, x, y and z. You can move forward and backward. You can move left and right and you can move top and bottom. So you have three perpendicular directions to play with. This is what makes things three dimensional. When the point is your entire world, there is nowhere to move. When you are on a line, at least you have one direction to move. A plane gives you two directions and space gives you three dimensions. For a line, we need one axis, for example, X axis. For a plane, we need two X and Y. And for space, we need three axes, X, Y, and Z. Let's see this in action. When we only have a point to work with, there is no way for us to move. When we have a line, let's say we have our X axis. We give us one dimension to move. We can now move along the X axis. When we add one more line perpendicular to this, let's call this the Y axis. Now we can also move along the Y axis. So we have unlocked one more degree of freedom. In this case, we have two degrees of freedom, one along the X axis and the other one along the Y axis. And together they make up the entire plane. If we add one more dimension, if we add the Z axis, we now have three dimensions to work with. We can move along the X axis. We can move along the Y axis and we can move along the Z axis. We can go above this plane and below this plane. And now we have entered our three dimensional space. All right. Let's talk about coordinates. When we're in 2D, we only need two coordinates X and Y. So they can be written as X and Y. But when we're in 3D, we need three coordinates X, Y and Z. These coordinates tell us how much we have moved along these axes. 
For example, if we have 2 comma 6, let's mark 2 comma 6, we move 2 units along the x axis and 6 units along the y axis. So this is 2 comma 6. But if we have 2 comma 6 comma 4, this means we've moved along x axis, y axis and z axis. So 2 comma 6 comma 4 is above this plane. This is where 2 comma 6 comma 4 lies. So this point is in 3D space. This is 2 comma 6 comma 4. All right. Now these two axes, the x and the y axis, divide this plane into four parts. We call them quadrants. So we have these four quadrants. Let's mark the axis x and y. Now they divide this plane into four parts. This is the first quadrant. This is the second quadrant, the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. The top right where both x and y coordinates are positive. That's the first one. Here we have x negative. Here we have both negative and here we have x positive and y negative. So these are our four quadrants. Something very similar happens in the 3D world as well. Think about it. If you have one more axis, in how many parts will these three axes divide the entire space? Pause the video, think about it. All right, let's do this together. This X axis in 3D will slice this space like this. Y axis will do something like this. And Z axis will do something like this. So how many paths do we have? Well, in 2D, we had carpets. In 3D, we have rooms. Think of this as your ground floor. You have four rooms on the ground floor. And then this is our basement. We have four more rooms in our basement as well. So together, we have four plus four, eight rooms, and we call them octants. Quad stands for four and oct stands for eight. So four quadrants in 2D, eight octants in 3D. Let's see them in action. We have the first octant. This is our first octant where all three things are positive X, Y, and Z. Then we have the second octant, third octant, and fourth octant. These four rooms are on the ground floor. And then we have our basement, four more rooms in the basement. We have our fifth octant, sixth octant, seventh octant, and finally our eighth octant. So these are our eight rooms, four above and four below the XY plane. These are called octants. All right. So we have four parts in two dimensions and eight parts in three dimensions. And there is a pattern here. For two dimensions, we have four. For one dimension, we have two parts. For any line, we can have a positive side and a negative side. Think about the real number line. And even for the point, we have one part. This entire thing is just one single part. So every time we're adding a dimension, we're multiplying the number of parts by a factor of two. And there's a proper naming convention for these quadrants and octants. In 2D, the top right is always the first quadrant. Similarly, in 3D, this octant where all three coordinates are positive X, Y, and Z, that's the first octant. Let's visualize this. When we have a point in 2D, if we have positive X and positive Y, we're in the first quadrant. When we have X negative, we're in the second quadrant. When we have Y negative as well, we're in the third quadrant. And then when we have X positive and Y negative, we're in the fourth quadrant. Similarly, when we move in 3D, let's move in 3D. We have X positive, Y positive, and Z positive. We go up along the Z axis. This is our first octant. Now let's stay up. Let's stay on the ground floor. Let's start moving. When we have our X negative, this room is our second octant. When we have both X and Y negative, but Z positive, this is our third room or third octant. Then we move to this one. This is X positive, Y negative, and Z positive. This is our fourth room. So we're moving in this circle anticlockwise. Let's do this again. This is our first octant second octant, third octant, and fourth octant. We'll go to the basement. Let's come down. This is our fifth octant. This one's fifth. Fifth is just below the first one. Then you have sixth. Then you have seventh. And finally, you have eighth. So four above and four below. 
one, two, three, four, and then in the basement, five, six, seven, and eight. These are our eight octants. In 2D, the quadrants were above and below the X axis. In 3D, the octants are above and below the X, Y plane. This plane is called the X, Y plane because it has X and Y axis. Similarly, this is Z, Y plane and this is X, Z plane. All right, now let's practice some problems. Here's the first one. A point is on the X axis, find its Y coordinate and Z coordinate. Think about it. Okay, if the point is on the X axis, this means it's not moving along the Y or Z axis. So if it's on the X axis, there is no movement along the Y axis or along the Z axis. This means that the coordinates will look something like this, X comma zero comma zero. 2 comma 0 comma 0, 5 comma 0 comma 0, minus 3 comma 0 comma 0. These two will stay 0 because we have no movement along these two coordinates. Here's the next one. A point is on the YZ plane. What is its X coordinate? Think about it. Okay, so this is our YZ plane. Imagine a point on this plane. Let's move along Y axis and then let's move along the Z axis and we are on the YZ plane. Any point on this plane will have no coordinate along the X axis. There is no movement along the X axis. We only have movement along Y and Z. This means the coordinate will look something like this. 0 comma Y comma Z, which means the X coordinate is 0. All right, let's solve a few more. Name the octants in which the following points lie. Now I'm going to list down five points, 1 comma 2 comma 3. 4 comma minus 2 comma minus 3, 4 comma 2 comma minus 5, minus 4, 2 minus 5, and minus 4 minus 2 minus 5. Pause the video, think about it. In fact, close your eyes when you're imagining, when you're visualizing, where are these points lying? In which octant are these points lying? All right, let's do this together. 1 comma 2 comma 3. So we're moving one unit along the x axis. Then we have two units along the Y axis. Okay. And then three units along the Z axis. So one comma two comma three is here. One, two and three. All three points are positive. This means that this is in the first octant. Let's look at the next one. Four minus two minus three. So we move four units along X axis and then minus two along Y axis. So we move back and then minus three, which means we go to the basement. So minus three. Which octant? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. This is the eighth octant. All right. Any point which has coordinates with these signs, positive, negative, negative, will be in the eighth octant. Let's mark the signs for the remaining three. We have positive, positive, negative, negative, positive, negative, 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 negative. Now let's think about these signs. Which octants do these signs lie? This one's in the first octant. This one's in the eighth one. What about this one? 4, 2, minus 5. We have 4 as positive, 2 as positive, so we are positive in x and y, and then minus 5. So x and y is positive, but for z we have minus 5. So we're in the basement, which is the fifth octant. So we mark 5 here. Minus plus minus, so negative x, positive y, and then negative z. This is our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6th octant. And the last one, negative, negative, negative. So let's make this negative as well. This one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th octant. This one is our 7th octant. So we have good practice on visualizing octants now. Let's wrap this up. Go back to our cricket game. We have our baller. This is where you were, and this was the wicket. These are our other players. So now we can see the world as it really is. It's a three dimensional world and the coordinates of the top of the wicket are 0, 0, 1 because we're only moving along the Z axis. So that's 0, 0, 1. These are also the coordinates of our first video in the 3D world. See you in the next one.